Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3 moves into a slightly different tone because you will now begin to see a, a very ancient courtship between uh, Ruth and Boaz. This is what we see in chapter 3. Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now, understand this. What do you mean by security? Security literally means rest. So they, will, they consider when you get married to a man, you have rest. Uh, because you have a place of your own, uh, you, are, you become the mother, you have a husband, a man of your own who will protect and take care of you. And in that sense, a young woman would be at rest. And that's what she means by security. Uh, it comes from the same word as Noah. Uh, the Hebrew name is Noah. And it means rest. And so this is the same. So marriage to them in the culture is rest and it may be well. So it is not just with any Tom, Dick and Harry. So the parents usually find someone who is good, technically speaking. Uh, uh, otherwise, in political scenes, they do it for political expediency, right? The two countries can have peace. And, 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 and so we're not talking about that. We're talking in general terms. So the mother and says, Naomi considers Ruth her daughter. So Naomi is concerned for the future of Ruth. And so in this case, seek security to look for a resting place for Ruth. So verse 2, now Boaz whose young women you were with, is he not our relative? And again, I mentioned to you, relative means someone who is very close. Very close. In fact, he is windowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. I'm not sure whether you understand what is windowing barley. It's like windowing wheat or windowing uh, rice or paddy. And, uh, all of these are the same kinds. It grows up like grass. And then the, the, the tail end of the stalk will be where the barley or the, the, the wheat or the, the rice uh, uh, husk will be. And so they would, they would beat it, right? They would have an ox to, to, to step on it. And then after stepping on it, they'll put it onto a large platter. And then they would throw it up and let the wind blow the husk away. And the barley, being heavy, would fall back into the tray. And that is winnowing, right? This winnowing. And so, somehow, Naomi knows that, well, this is what Boaz is doing. For some reason, it seems to be that Naomi and Boaz may have been talking at the back. So they know each other quite well and, and, and how each is moving. So verse 3, Therefore, Wash yourself and anoint yourself. Now, in this case, anoint would be with oil. Right? All, all the time, uh, when you talk about anoint, it is to pour something onto yourself, to smear some oil. Now, maybe this might be some fragrance. Because in those days, they don't have perfume, right? And so they may have some fragrant oil. And so this is actually meant to, well, I guess in, in modern day, to, to, to prepare yourself, right? To attract a man. And so you, you're clean, you put on some oil, and you put on your best garment. So you look very pretty. You go down to the threshing floor. But the threshing floor is where the men work. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. So when he is full, he will be tired. He would have been, what, maybe he drinks a bit more alcohol. May not be very much himself. Or he will be tipsy. 
And then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice where he lies. So look at where he lies down. You shall go in, uncover his feet and lie down and notice it is at his feet. This is also not only an idiom, but as a practice, you are lying down to keep his feet warm. Right? Keep his feet warm. And in, in a sense, it also symbolizes intimacy. It also symbolizes that you are there to care for the man. And then he will tell you what you should do. And then she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. Now, this is very interesting because this is about what Ruth said to Naomi. Where you go, I will go. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Basically, she has assigned herself to Naomi as a daughter to a mother. For any parents, this is basically how the children should treat the parents to listen to everything the parents say because the parents will actually do what is best for the children. So this represents a very, very clear and unambiguous relationship between a mother and a daughter. The ancient family behaves that way. Uh, and, and, and so the children of Israel is supposed to listen to the God of Israel. Uh, Jehovah is their father. And so they are supposed to say, all that you say to me, my God, we will do. And that was what happened in the book of Exodus, you know, in chapter 20 onwards, uh, where Moses opened and read the book of the covenant and they say, yes, we do. Uh, it's basically a, a, a public declaration of their allegiance to God. And this represents that allegiance. And this allegiance is to Naomi. Verse 6. So she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. Notice this word, instructed. This very much, uh, how should we say, uh, is a gift charge. In other places, it is to command. Uh, and, and it is used as instructions. It's the same word that is used when Moses said, this is what I command you. And so the mother-in-law commands Ruth. And so Ruth did according to all that is instructed. This is the kind of model that God wants with man. That as I have instructed you, go do likewise. And this is what Ruth did, what the mother-in-law said, she did it. That, that really reflects what it means by an instruction. I think the parents would say that way. When you tell your children, this is what I want you to do, you, you are not expecting them to debate about it or, or to forget about it. You want them to do accordingly. And then you'll be happy. And this is what is described here in this relationship. Verse 7, after Boaz had eaten and drunk, in this case, remember it is wine and not water. And his heart was cheerful. And of course, this describes a little bit uh, about uh, his heart. And this, this, his heart was good. This is the word. What do you mean good? It is, it, he's feeling according to the way he wants, he should be feeling because he has drunk his wine, right? So this, even though we say it's cheerful, this is a modern English word. The Hebrew word is that his heart is good. And remember, good means it is working or doing what it is supposed to do. 
And so it would be with reference to how Boaz would feel because that is how his heart feels. So when God looks at it, then it will be according to how God wants things to happen. So that is what good actually means. And so he went down. Uh, he went down. And he says to lie down. Uh, that, that is interesting. He lie down at the end of the heap of grain, which means that after he did the winnowing, there must be a lot of grain stacked on the ground. Right? One big heap. And then she came in softly. Uh, the word here is mysteriously, secretly. It also means, uh, how should we say, enchantly. Enchant. It's also called enchantment. It's really you come in to do something, but it is in, shrouded in mystery. So she is not making a big fuss of it. She is coming in very softly. So though the word softly is there, it's not primarily that there's no sound. That she came in with an intention. She came in with nobody knowing. Then that's what it means. And then uncovered his feet. And then she lied down. And this is exactly here. She did exactly what the mother-in-law said. Verse 8. Now, after all this, right? And now, after she had slept there, and sometime in the middle of the night, the man, that's Boaz, she, he, he trembled. Well, the word trembled, startled, or, or we say here, woke up. I think maybe that, that, that would have been a word. Woke up, uh, he, was, uh, he was anxious. He was, uh, well, startled is actually a good word because it is not just waking up from sleep. He was, he was suddenly stirred. Uh, uh, that, that was what it means. So the word startled literally means that he was so shaken, he was shocked, he was surprised, he was like, oh, what is happening? You know, that, that is what it means by startled. And then it says that he, he turned himself, literally he twisted. Now, you, you need to what, do you remember, what does it mean to twist, right? To twist means to bend. But he's lying down asleep. So when you bend, you are actually moving your feet. Because he discovered that there was a woman lying at his feet. So he was shocked. That is what, why it is described as turn himself. He actually moved, turned and moved his feet because he found that there was a woman lying at his feet. Basically on his feet, if you want to look at it that way. Right? And then he said, who are you? And he, he, was, he was shocked. Right? He was shocked. Now, in verse 9, he says, Who are you? And, and then Ruth answered, I am Ruth, your maid servant, a servant who is a woman. Notice, servants are in two forms. Right? Servant, you have a maid servant who is a female. You have a, a man servant who is a male. So he says, this is what I am. I am your maid servant. I am hoping that this is what you do. 
take your maid servant under your wing. What does this mean? I think it would be easier to say instead of take, it would be to spread. Spread your wings and cover me as a maid servant because you are a close relative. You are, uh, 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 how should we say? Uh, you are someone who is very close to me. You are somebody like a next of kin. And you are part of the family. That, that, that is where that statement is. Okay? And now when we come to verse 10, he said, blessed are you. And blessed means God bless you. No, that, that kind of blessing is not being happy. This blessed means that good things will come to you of the Lord, my daughter. Again, I put your attention to the fact that when, when Boaz calls her the daughter, it means that there is a, an age gap between them. And Ruth, as I mentioned to you, was married for maybe about 10 years, right? Uh, so she would be in her 20s. And, and, and I don't think she would have passed 30, right? And, and now in this case, when Boaz calls her my daughter, he would be much older, okay? For you have shown more kindness... And in this case, uh, more kindness at the end than at the beginning. And kindness here is has said more grace, more favor. Uh, sorry, uh, not grace and favor. Uh, kindness, all right? Kindness means goodness. Uh, it has many meanings. Things that is good, it's nice, uh, it's beautiful. Then, at the end, then at the beginning, in that, you did not go after young men, whether poor or rich. Now, this, this is a very telling statement. It means that Ruth was not interested in herself. Ruth only did what Naomi instructed her. And it was not so much as gaining a better life or a handsome man for herself. So verse 11, And now, my daughter, do not fear. Verse 11 is, do not be afraid. I will do for you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. What does that mean? When he says virtuous, uh, in this case, it is chayil. Uh, a woman who has, well, I would say, a, a, a force to be reckoned, right? Virtuous, a force to be reckoned. Uh, you could say that she is not an ordinary woman. She is a woman that has principle. She is a woman that has ability. She is a woman that has strength in her character. Now, in this case, is a character because this is the same word that is describing uh, Boaz in chapter 2. Uh, and so, in the case of Boaz, it refers to him as being rich, being wealthy, being powerful. But when it, this word is referring to Ruth, uh, it seems that both of them have the same, same reputation. And Ruth is known as one who is strong in character to display an honorable and faithful character to Naomi. 
verse 12. Now it is true, I am a close relative. However, there is a relative closer than I. And that's verse 12, right? Uh, one is close, that is Boaz, that is one closer than I. Stay this night and in the morning it shall be that if he will perform the duty of a close relative for you, good. Let him do it. But if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you as the Lord lives. Now this is another phrase which many of us are not familiar. As the Lord lives is a vow. Boaz has agreed, and not only agreed, he cannot break his word. Because he says, as the Lord lives, this is what I will do. For now, you rest until morning. And so many people thought that, wow, Boaz is going to take advantage of her. And the answer is no. The answer is very clear that Boaz and Ruth has a different conversation. It is to redeem Ruth to bring her really into the family that belongs to Eli Melech, which is the husband of Naomi. And in order to do that, to redeem and to do this piece of work as the close relative, then it will require one who is very close. And so Boaz honestly told her there is one closer. If he doesn't do it, I will do it as a vow. So this is very, very uh, Torah-driven uh, as in terms of redeeming land. Verse 14, so she lay at his feet until morning and then she arose before one could recognize another. Remember, she came in in secret. She came in as a mystery. She left exactly the same way. So nobody knew about this. Then he said, do not let it be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Verse 15. Also he said, bring the shawl. What is the shawl? This is verse 15. And this is really a cloak. In short, it, it, may, it may look like a shawl, but the, the, the meaning here is, is a big piece of cloth that is woven and that will cover her from head to toe. And so it's called a cloak rather than just the head covering, right? So that's why it's called a, a shawl, a, a, a cloak rather than a shawl. So that is on you and hold it. And this is spoken to Ruth. And when she held it, he measured six apars of barley and laid it on her. Then she went into the city. Now, what did she do? She would hold the cloak and this is her. That's her height. And that would be the barley that Right, the barley that, that uh, Boaz was going to give her. That's how much barley there is. Six epas, which means that it's more than, it's six days of what she had collected on the first day. When she came to her mother-in-law, she went home. Is that you, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her. What did he do for her? Remember? He told her that, yes, I will redeem you if the other closer relative won't. That's number one. Number two, these six epas of barley he gave me. That's number two. Do not go empty-handed to your mother-in-law. In a way, you could see this as a precursor, as a dowry. Right? Now, in the, in the Hebrew culture, the dowry is actually given by the man to the woman. Uh, 
uh, very similar to Chinese culture as well. Uh, all the Oriental cultures are the same. Then she said, sit still, my daughter. Uh, meaning you just sit here, don't do anything until you know how the matter will turn out. For the man will not rest until he has concluded the matter this day. What is the matter? It is about the redemption of Ali Malek's possessions, property. And this he will do so that the family now regains the property. This is chapter 3. After the young woman in the, in the field, right? that means Boaz has got one group of young women. Is it? A woman and men. They are all servants. Up. They are all servants, servants. yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, in, this, in this story, uh, is Naomi actually planning with... Uh, I mean, to her, it's, it's good. Uh, but to us, it looks like she, she is teaching... Uh, Ruth to sort of something like seduce Boaz. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, on the surface, when you read it as a non-Hebrew, that's probably how we see it. Mm. Uh, I had also suggested to you that it, it looks like uh, Naomi and Boaz uh, had discussions before uh, 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 as to what, what is to come because of the request of the redemption plan. Uh, but exactly how Naomi is to instruct Ruth to do, he wouldn't know. And so th this is really a test as well to see whether Boaz is a man of his word and also a faithful, trustworthy man. And, uh, and Naomi is also showing whether she is a faithful and trustworthy daughter. See, all this is actually a test. And when the time came, Boaz never laid a hand on her. Boaz knew exactly what he needs to do. And he was a man of his word. And not only did he say it, he made a vow of it to take care of her and bring her under the wing. Very peculiar way. Yeah. Remember, this is not Chinese. This is not American or Western. This is very Israel or very Hebrew uh, way. So, which is why I was telling you all to know about the Hebrew way of life. It's all in the Old Testament. It's all in the Old Testament. So, this, this is their way of life. The mother actually decides for the daughter. And the daughter is to listen to the mother. Just follow. Yes. Unlike Today's children. <laughs> <laughs> the world changed. <laughs> yeah. uh, can I ask uh, verse 14? Do not let mm. it be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Uh, is the uh, boys talking to Ruth? Ruth. Uh, this would be talking to the companions, perhaps. This is the companion of, uh, of, of Boaz. Boaz was not alone by himself. Remember, he's a very rich man and a very powerful man. And he would have other people with him, like the, the head of the servants and some of these other people, but mm -hmm. a few of them. Uh, and, and by that, all of them are behind Boaz. But nobody else in the, in, in, in the house or in the entire house and community know. That, that's what it means. All right. Most Friday, yeah. Mm. Bye. Thanks, Pastor. Bye. Okay. <clears throat>